War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. Welcome everyone to Combat on the Rim, the guide that's going to help you defend your colony against those Manhunter packs of 20 Timberwolves. The combat system definitely needs a little bit of improvement in RimWorld, and Combat Extended is not a viable alternative. So here is how you can improve your combat performance on the Rim. Add Magwell for easier reload on the default carrier. For melee weapons, in my opinion, they're underrated in the instance of a human raid, as you can bait and gang up on raiders if all they have are guns. Okay, do it again. Do it again. Ouch. Okay, you'll block it every time. Your sharp weapons such as knives, long swords, and spears are used to deal the most amount of damage and should be used for killing raiders, while your blunt weapons such as clubs and maces should be used for a much higher chance of knocking raiders down and turning them into Roombas. For cave boy bows and pilas, I wouldn't use these due to the low armor penetration, low long range accuracy, and the lowest projectile speed because ganging up on those Imperials with clubs is such a better alternative. For guns, I have categorized them based on range and their range effectiveness. For sidearms, I recommend the revolver as not only you start with one in the crash landed scenario, but the stats are better than the other sidearms overall. For short range, I recommend the pump shotgun because of its accuracy and low cooldown time along with its low cost. For medium range, the charge lance is obviously the best, but the other two alternatives are good depending on the materials available. Finally, for long range, I recommend the AR because of its low cost and its burst fire. Area of effect weapons include throwables and launchers. Each one has its own advantage and if you've played the game you know what each one does. But for a basic rule of thumb, frags are for enemies around cover or in groups, Molotovs and incendiary launchers are for catching shit on fire, and EMPs are for robots and those imperial scums with shield belts. Weapons of mass destruction are basically a fat man of RimWorld, and you should use these with caution. Yo! Doomsday and triple rocket launchers are single use and should be used against massive groups of threats. Orbital targeters are just beams or missiles from the sky. I personally use these against encampments or big groups of raiders in the late game. The two notable artifacts you should use are the insanity and shock lances. Insanity lances make a human-like or animal go berserk, so you can use it on that OP raider that turns and kills its own raiding party. Shock lances just down a human-like or an animal instantly, which I only use against thrombos to turn a profit. Are you an insane? The best defense, that's me. First of all, when getting raided, observe what type of raid it is and the weapons the raiders possess as well as their gear. As we can see, we have a tribal raid and this is what we can assess. You're free, you're literally so free, freer than a free sample at Costco, your dog water, literally so dog. For melee tactics, we have the rush, peeling, and funneling strategies. Rushing is great for when raiders with guns are ambushed by your melee colonists, forcing them to melee with their guns. Peeling is good for when you have a gunner being attacked by melees, which then you can send your melees to attack them and force your gunner to go free. And finally, funneling is my favorite as you can funnel raiders with melee weapons into a single tile in which they can only fight one of your pawns and you force a 3v1 situation. Reach me with that hand. Reach me with that hand. You cannot. Also, shield belts are recommended to avoid gunners from taking out your brawlers in the mid to late game. For range tactics, you have the flanking, tanking, and outranging strategies. To flank, aggro the raiders to behind the cover and then send other gunners around to get a better angle. To tank, have a shielded colonist aggro gunfire and then send out your gunners to fire at the enemy. Outranging is when your gun just has more range against the other raiders' guns. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
now we're going to give an overview on how to defend every single assault. To combat sieges, have yourself a set of mortars and counter mortar them. Aim for their stash of mortars to cause the most amount of damage. Use more than one type of mortar in your counter as each has its own effect. And when the raiders start their attack, use one of the melee or ranged tactics mentioned earlier. For drop pods, which I believe is the most annoying type of raid, have choke points throughout your base and some cover and pathways so your colonists can respond effectively. Mechs can be overwhelming if you don't know how to combat them effectively. All mechs except for the scyther can be countered with melee attacks attacks but scythers should be handled with your high armored colonists and avoid long range fights with the mechs that have guns such as the lancers and pikemen. All mechs should be baited into small areas and stunned with EMPs. With crash ships, just set up defenses and prepare for an instant attack by multiple mechs and use EMPs like mentioned earlier and also the melee tactics. For manhunters, if the animals are predators, it might just be best to forbid access to your base via your walls or doors and just starve them. Small packs of manhunter animals, however, can be taken out by just basic combat tactics. And now for the forbidden event. Infestations. Infestations usually occur in mountain bases, and to combat this completely is to have your entire mountain base cooled to freezing temperatures. But if you don't want to go through that hassle, you need to have funnels set up throughout your base, or you can set sections on fire if you don't have flammable materials for that section. To figure out which tiles hives can spawn on, click this icon and the darkest green is where you need to fill in. For insects that appear in mountains, fill the tiles that they can appear in so this doesn't happen. Or you can just wall it off. I recommend walling it off with more than two layers and also just completely encasing it after you've set the IEDs in there with the wood tile. So when there's a hive that spawns there, it will catch everything on fire and burn them out. I hate to admit this, but against sappers, I recommend using a kill box. Why are you gay? Because in the late game, what are you gonna do against a hundred raiders with your cloth sandbags? Sappers choose the source route to your colonist beds usually, so having a kill box with an opening pathway to your colony is preferred. Also, surround the inside of your walls with turrets because these go by line of sight, so make sure your turrets can actually shoot in the area and range that it's in. The turrets also don't need to be powered, and also, this will be mentioned later, if you put the turrets in your kill zone, put them behind doors that you can open with one colonist as raiders enter the kill box because then they won't detect the line of sight of the turrets and they will just run into them. Holy look at all this damage. Now I would like to present some combat etiquette. So the first thing is called proper armor. For those players who sit there and have colonists that literally go through hell and they always ask themselves, why did that my pawn just get insta shot? Hey yo, what the f Well, it's probably because you didn't have a flak vest or you don't have head armor. So a good mid game combination of armor would be a simple helmet, a duster, flak vest, and flak pants. And here's the total cost of the entire fit. For animals you tame, they can also be decoys or even trained as fighting animals. My favorite animals to send to a raid party are boomalopes. Next is spacing out your colonists as this can help condense the amount of damage done to your colonists because if your colonists are too close together, stray bullets can go to one or the other as well as splash damage can also be avoided by multiple colonists and may only target one. Like mentioned earlier, in pretty much every single tactic, use shield belts. One mistake people do in the early game, at least, is having the proper medicine. Regular medicine should be saved for important raids and serious injuries, but always have at least herbal medicine and your best doctor on standby to tend quickly. Also, one more thing is understand that you're going to lose people in big raids. So have a hospital room placed conveniently near your main defense. Next is utilizing cover. Cover is your best friend, whether it's barricades, sandbags, walls, tables, chunks, other colonists. Next is friendly fire. If you have a colonist shooting at a target and you have another colonist that's a few tiles in front of the first one, don't do this because this is how brain damage is dealt by people with brain damage. If your colonist mood is not great, do not send them in a battle. Yes! 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 No! 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 F I would say give your colonists drugs to boost the morale. <laughs> For allies, make sure you call them in as meat shields for big raids. Next is pause frequently, as RimWorld is basically speed chess. You want to pause to sit and think about your decisions. Personally, sometimes I like to go to McDonald's and then come back. 
Let me get the three-piece titty. When choosing your most valiant warriors, take their health and traits into consideration. You obviously don't want a wimp or someone with a frail back. Uh -huh. And when doing offensive tactics, take these same strategies, but you're actually taking the fight to them. Well, well, well. How the turntables 